one observation I have of life is the most irreverent are often the most revered. People love irreverence when done right. I've talked about this on other videos and talks here. I talked about it in the five iconoclast video. I talked about it other places as well. I recently saw two videos on the net that are interestingly very similar in a sense, yet people's reactions to them is very different. I saw the video Smell the Brimstone by Westboro Baptist Church. One of the big scenes in the video is all these figures, these icons of our world are burning in hell. That's typical Westboro Baptist Church. They are very, very iconoclastic. They are iconoclastic to the max. They rip apart everything. People don't like them. People hate when they do that. People have a big problem. Another video I recently saw was a video by a guy named Neil Fox. I understand that he's not quite as well known as Westboro Baptist Church, but have a look at his videos. I'm a big political person, so I totally love any political music. Some people think you're a freak if you have to have politics in your music too, but hey, that's me. His video, Take Out the Trash, is about how all these leaders we have today are terrible, terrible, terrible. He doesn't spare anybody. He goes after Democrats, Republicans. He goes after African leaders. He goes after Latin American leaders. Very, very iconoclastic. Everyone seems to love Neil Fox. Iconoclasm has to be done right. When it's done wrong, people hate it. When it's done right, people love it. I have long felt a drawing to an attraction to iconoclasm. It is who I am. And sometimes it has gone wrong. Sometimes it has gone right. So who am I going to be like? Westboro Baptist Church? Or people like Neil Fox who are against powers and government? When I was in high school, that was when I started to gain a political consciousness and I went after everything. In government class, I asked questions about government curriculum. In biology class, I asked questions about that. I asked questions in English class about what we read. I challenged those in power. Interestingly, I read something by Deborah Tannen. She said, oftentimes those who are most against authority don't have a problem with authority in and of itself, but rather they just resent the fact that they're not in authority. I did some soul searching and I realized she has a point about people like me. I want to be in authority. But how am I going to be if I'm in authority? If I'm going to be just like everyone else, then it's a problem. It's like the old saying, the liberator becomes the executioner. And we've seen that in the world. I want to be well known and I want to be in a position of influence but how am I going to do that? Am I going to use my power correctly or incorrectly? Am I going to be an iconoclast that everyone hates or everyone loves? That is a question I need to ask myself over and over again.
one of the most common sayings people say is, if you live in a glass house, don't throw stones. What is the dominant moral here? Is it that it's wrong to criticize people? Or is it that it's wrong to criticize people if you are not living it yourself? Now, this is not necessarily the same as blatant hypocrisy, such as somebody who is a preacher yet screwing lots of women. It's more at a deeper level. It's stuff you're not aware you're doing that's a problem. It's stuff that may not even be brought to the surface. Yet it's still a problem. Recently, I went to Africa about a year ago and I had a problem with the Peace Corps. I didn't like the way they were treating the locals. I didn't like how arrogant, pushy they were. And after I got home, I realized I may have not been the same way in that context as they were. But in other contexts, I was definitely preachy. I was definitely patronizing, arrogant, pushy. So I dug deep into my soul and made some changes. Next time I go to Africa, what is the moral? Should I oppose the Peace Corps to say you can't judge? If it's evil, I think it's perfectly legitimate to go after it as long as your own home is clear. What you need to do is not stop throwing stones. Temporarily, yes. Stop throwing stones once you realize you have a glass house. But then go into your house, clean house, tear the house down, erect a new house, and then... Once your house is no longer class, you can throw stones. The greatest people in the world went after evils. So I think it's foolish to say you shouldn't ever say something is wrong. But whenever you're saying something is wrong, it, it, it behooves yourself to do some soul searching. And this is not going to happen just with the Peace Corps. It's going to happen with the government. In high school, I was against the government, but I realized I had the tyrant in me as well. When I worked at the school system, I was against all the power trips everyone was on. I didn't manifest my power issues and control issues in the same way. But afterwards, I did some soul searching and I realized I did have power and control issues. I removed them from my soul and now I am ready. Go back at them. I'm ready to go back at the government. I'm ready to go back at the Peace Corps. I'm ready to go back at the public schools. And everything else. I believe when you undergo personal transformation, you have the right to then start to throw stones again. But Fred Phelps is not doing introspection. It's not something he... Can do. So I want to be like Neil Fox and be revered for my irreverence, not slandered, detested for my irreverence.